Alright, so I may have only played the first stage of this game, but from what I've gathered, this game is nothing short of fucking amazing. Now, this game is challenging, and that is by design. When I got this early access key, I was told that the developers say that the gaming world's muscles have become weak, and Volgar is your trainer. Crazy Viking Studios is the developer of this game, and the game is published by Adult Swim Games. And the fact that both of these companies are behind this game shows that both of these companies really know their stuff when it comes to games and game design. The game feels like a game from the 90s, and a really good game from the 90s at that. I think Crazy Viking Studios worked toward that end. I think they tried to intentionally make this game feel like a game from that era. It even comes with a full-color PDF manual that looks very similar to the type of manuals that you would get physically in games that you would buy off the shelf in the 90s. And the gameplay itself also feels very good. Like any good game, the game teaches you as you play it. Most notably, and most pleasantly, the game does this without the use of tutorials or without interrupting your game in any way. It teaches you about its gameplay with its gameplay. Right at the start of the game, there's this dude who's just kind of chilling out in the background and pointing over to the right, so that tells you that you should go right. There is no menu in this game. There's no press start to play. There's no select or down and press start for options. There's none of that stuff. You're just right in the game, right at the start. So you just start jumping around and moving and hitting a bunch of buttons and things like that and trying to learn how to play. Then, a little bit later, there's this treasure chest who's in your way. You see the bad guy over there on the right, but you can't get to him. And pressing buttons near the treasure chest doesn't open it, so that tells you that you should just go ahead and start beating on the treasure chest to open up these chests and get your reward. So that tells you that you're going to be doing a lot of hitting shit in this game. Now, when you picked up the item from that treasure chest, your guy automatically threw this awesome flaming spear, okay? And then the spear stuck in the wall. So that tells you that you can throw spears and stick them in the wall. Doesn't that look like a platform? Because the spear's kind of sitting there glowing and stuff, trying to get your attention. So yeah, you can jump on these and use these as a means of getting around the stage. And of course, being spears, there's a good chance that they make effective ranged weapons. The game makes that evident to you in case you didn't already get this by the fact that your guy just throws one through this lizard dude. So there we go. Now we know that spears can be used for multiple things. So it turns out that Volgar can actually roll around on the ground so that you can avoid attacks or get around the stage or just look cool. But the game's not going to put you in a situation up front where you need to use it to dodge an attack. No, the way it teaches you how to do this is, again, at that beginning part of the stage, they put you in a little area at the end before you transition into the next part of the stage where you can't get through unless you duck and then roll under. The game doesn't tell you how to execute the roll. You just have to kind of figure it out, and it's intuitive. You duck, you point in the direction that you want to roll, and then you press the jump button. And there he goes, rolling like a boss. And guess what? Having been through just that first scene of the game, just that first few seconds, you now know everything you need to know about controlling Volgar and the whole premise of the game. You collect treasure, you kill bad dudes, you jump, you jump again, you throw spears as platforms, and you roll around being cool. There you go. That's Volgar the Viking for you in a nutshell. But those are just the fundamentals. This game has a lot more to teach you, and there's a lot more to this gameplay than just that. For example, when you leave that first area, you drop right down next to this big blue thing. You're like, what the fuck is that? You have no idea. But then later, when you die, you respawn next to it, and you're like, oh, that's what that is. That's like a checkpoint. You'll also learn at some point in the game, probably early on, that your shield blocks stuff. You're going to take a hit. You're going to hear that metallic clank sound. You're going to see the visual representation of your shield blocking something, and you're going to realize that your shield is actually something that you can effectively use. Not only that, but you'll also learn early on that enemies have certain behaviors. These guys will actually crawl up from the ground, or they'll appear at the edge of the screen to come and attack you, but they only attack high, so you can duck and avoid their attacks while having free reign over attacking them. The fact that control of your character is so easy, but versatile, and the fact that enemies have certain behaviors, and that you've got certain moves and strategies that you can use against certain enemies and that they can use against you, leads to strategic combat, and you've learned that the gameplay is about positioning, strategy, and player-based skill. Now, the game manual does mention that warriors who have a keen awareness of their surroundings will be victorious. Early on in the game, you'll find this block. The block looks very different from anything else around it, and you can clearly see a different area underneath. So, you strike at this block, you break it open, and now you find a different area that's just below the area where you are about to travel, and this one's got treasure. So, this tells you that there are hidden passages, there are breakable blocks, and that there are sometimes multiple different paths that you can take to get through the stage. By the way, you also learn a little bit more about your character when you take a hit. You don't see any kind of health bar on screen, so you don't know how much damage you can take. Instead, when you take damage, you see some of your equipment fly off of your character. And this tells you that once all of your equipment is gone, you're vulnerable. The next hit that you take is going to send you back to a checkpoint. On this note, you don't see any visible lives counter on this screen. You don't know that if each time you're messing up, you're losing a life or what. But inevitably, 
as you keep messing up and as you keep getting sent back to the checkpoint over and over again, you eventually get the notion that there are no lives in this game. You just have an unlimited number of tries. Now that's a very subtle little design mechanic that's put into the game. The fact that you learn something eventually. Nothing comes out and outright tells you that you have an unlimited number of tries. Just inevitably, as you play through the game, you're going to figure that out on your own. And this inevitability also comes into play in combination with another of the mechanics that they taught you a little bit later on in the game. At this part of the stage, you might find these breakable blocks. And within these breakable blocks is this, this, what is it, like a stone hammer or like a stone potion bottle? I don't know. But you find it, you pick it up, and then your character's like really happy about it. So you know it's a power-up. You know it's not anything bad. You know you didn't stumble across a trap or something like that because your character's glowing now. He raised his sword in excitement. It's obviously a power-up. So you know you've got some sort of new power, some sort of new ability, or something going on with your character. You don't know if you're attacking harder. You don't know if it's a defensive item. You don't know what it is. The game doesn't outright tell you what this actually is. But that inevitability comes into play when you take a hit, because let's face it, you're going to take a hit. BAM! This happens, and oh, wow, that was freaking amazing! You had no idea that was going to happen. It was a very pleasant surprise. It was exciting. It was action-packed. It was very powerful, and now you're glad that you found that secret item. The bottom line is that this game is filled with a bunch of really cool stuff and a lot of fun gameplay. I strongly recommend you pick it up. The link to get the game is in the video description. This is a Steam game, and you can find the release date for it there, and if it's already released by the time you watch this video, then go pick it up. Now, when Adult Swim Games gave me this key, they told me that the game was going to release in its first week on sale. So if you're going to pick up the game, you might want to consider getting it in its first week. All right, so I think that will do it for this particular video. There's a lot more that I'd like to cover about this game, but really the gameplay kind of has to speak for itself, and it does. So you can either play it yourself and experience everything about it, or if you're really looking for more Volgar content, I'm going to release another video that is the full unedited version of my first playthrough of the first stage. That is me going from the very beginning, getting through the stage, and then beating the end boss. So the link to that video is on screen now. It will not be a fully commentated video. It's just going to be, for the most part, Volgar gameplay of the first stage, my first experience with it. Alright, as for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.